Afternoon. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Latest uh, video from Data Analytics Ireland. I hope you're all keeping well. And if this is your first time, welcome. I hope you get some use out of this video. Have a browse around our website. And if you're returning to watch another video, brilliant. I hope uh, the previous videos or any videos you've watched have been helpful to you in the work that you do. So today we're going to look at what, how to check for invalid characters in your data set. So there's a, a number of reasons to do this. Um, a lot of us around data cleansing. Um, we, for any time you might want to be doing data validation. Uh, if you're passing your data set on and you want to reduce errors further down the field in the processing between systems or wherever that data is fed to, it will help here. Uh, data errors and data problems like when based to show uh, it has to incur some manual intervention uh, by humans mo most likely to fix the problem so by taking this step you cut out a, a piece of work where people have to actually go in and see well what's the problem number one and how we fix it number two and it just makes it for a smoother process and finally wherever you work within your organization or what piece of work you're doing or output you're giving it improves the data quality and it basically means anybody who's using this data that you're working on can rely on it more for less errors and more succinct reliability so i'm going to start off um today we're going to basically create just a very basic data set so i haven't imported it from a file i've just basically created here um in actually the, the logic so what we've done is we basically gave a variable here um, and we've given it two fields with values um, so one's called number obviously and the one's called error so the piece we want we're focusing on is here um, so as you can see we've created what well, one two three four five six seven pieces of data and we've within them we're theoretically saying these are a number field. We can't have anything, anything else but numbers in them. So no special characters, no alphabetic new number, alphabetic values, so on and so forth. So I haven't checked anything in alphabetic values in this, but I may look at that in the future posts. Um, for the moment, we're just going to look at special characters for today's example. So as you can see here, got a list of numbers, obviously. You got ampersand, dollar sign, dollar, euro, multiplication, uh, pound sign, forward slash, and the at sign from that you would normally use in an email address. Okay, so the whole idea here is we're saying basically that the rules for this particular data set number is you should only have numbers in the field. So what you're trying to do is validate, is there any un unwanted characters in that field? And we want to move them. Okay. So essentially, this is our set of data we're going to use. Next thing is we're actually going to create a data frame. Um, so basically, the data frame is basically saying, this piece of line is basically saying, create the data frame um, and take the values we want from data. And the values to put into the data frame will come from number and error. Okay, very straightforward. So as I said, just on the error, we've defaulted it for zero for the moment. Okay. So the next step is we've got a function here, right? So we're gonna spend a bit of time just going through the function and just explaining everything. So that what the function is doing is basically, it's going to loop through the data frame. And it's basically gonna look at a list down here and I'll go through the steps in a second. And then basically say, if I find the, any of these values um, in any of the values up here, let me know number one, and number two, then take them out and create a new column of these values without those uh, unwanted characters. Okay, so this is what this function is doing. So to start off, we'll actually go to the bottom first. And what we've done is this is the list we've created. And in this list, we're basically saying these are the, the values we want to check for. So these are basically the unwanted values in um in your data set you said if we find these throw them out as an error and then the next step is we're going to remove them so i suppose the first step we've done is we're basically saying df error um is basically it's a new column and we're basically saying 
we're going to leak the EDF number, which is all these values here. But we're basically saying find, use this piece of logic here called string extract, and then use this. So to explain what this is, if, and I'll put a comment in the blog posting after this, but basically to kind of explain it a bit more. But this is basically regular expressions, and there are numerous regular expressions um, that you can create to do what you want, but a lot of them are used to basically find the specific values. So there's multiple uh, ways you could use regular expressions. I won't go into the specifics of this here, but what I will do in the blog post is maybe elaborate on it more. But just to suffice to say that this regular expression here is looking for values like this, okay? So that's what that is. Now, what I would say is regular expressions can change to have a lot of different ways and formats to put them. So I could change this um, to different formats. Say if you're using email addresses, this would be a complete different format. If you're looking for say characters, the complete different format. If you're looking for uppercase, lowercase, different format again. So there's a lot to learn about a regular expressions. It's very, very handy. I would recommend you learn about it more. Um, it's something I'm still learning over time and it takes a bit getting used to it, but once you get used to it it's very very handy when you're writing code and logic especially when you're working on any data analytics data cleansing so on and so forth okay so this line here basically all it's doing is um if you don't find anything then it basically it basically just drops the line so essentially if we don't uh, so this is the output at the end is going to go through, but if we don't have anything in here, it basically means there's nothing in here. So basically means we can just ignore the line. Okay. So in this kind of case, it's redundant because we basically, we have errors in each particular data item. Okay. So that's what that line does. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a for loop. Um, so just to go through this and explain this to you. So what it's basically doing is it's basing for I and L. Okay, so we know L is the list. And what it's doing is the loop is basically saying it's taking each value I, uh, assigning each one of these to the value I as it goes to the loop. So I is first of all assigned that this loops through all this data and then does what it needs to do in the logic. Then I is assigned this value here, loops through again, does the logic, and then basically gives the output. Basically goes to the next one, next one, and so on and so forth. So as long as i has a value here so once it reaches here at the end then it will stop so that's what that bit so it's basically assigning i for each value in l it's assigning an i okay now the i has an index value associated with it so essentially when you assign i to this value it's been assigned i0 which we see here this is sign i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 i6 okay so you'll see all those there okay so basically what we're doing here is um, basically taking the, we're creating a new column called dfx. And we're basically saying go into df number here, okay? And if we find i0, which is say dollar in this example, we basically, we basically remove it and just replace it with basically nothing, okay? So essentially what you're seeing here is you have a dollar here. Uh, because we found it, we've removed it, okay? And basically here, so we have two of them in here. So the and is one, two, I zero, one, I zero, two, I zero. So we found I zero, three. So at this point, it's basically saying, if you find I zero, three, remove it, okay? So that's why in this scenario, you have one, two there. So the output is one, two, four, seven. So that should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is left. So we took out, we have nine characters there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We found two errors, which is the, the ampersand and the dollar sign. So what we're left is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So what this logic is basically saying is go and look for I zero, which is this value. And if we find it in, find it in the D number, basically return the D number value, but without that. Same again with I one, which is the multiplication I two which is the euro so on and so forth so that's what that's doing and essentially what i'm doing here is i'm replacing all i sorry i'm printing out all the basically all the errors so essentially i'm just printing out what's here okay 
Now something to note is actually, which I'll probably do in another post, is you have the at sign here, which is used quite regularly in an email. So what you could say in a scenario where you're using this is, um, if you have numbers, but you have email address, this could signify there could be say an email address here. So there could be another scenario where you have numbers and say part of an email address. So you need to validate that as well. Basically, is, is that actually a valid number as well? So that's probably another posting for another time, but just something to think about in the front of your head or if you're doing any work around um, basic data cleansing is if it's a number, is there email addresses as well? Okay. So our output, uh, sorry, sorry, final thing here is, this is obviously the running of the function. So when the function runs, only one thing to say to you, that obviously runs through all this logic, but this is the line that's executed, which goes up here and then runs all this. Okay, and then gives us the output down here. All right. One thing to say to you is the star L, or sorry, multiplication L. If you don't put this in, it will basically only loop through once and will basically only give you back the first, it will only look at the first one and not return any other values. So that's the reason for the star L. Um, okay, so here's our error lists. Okay, which we know is this here. Okay, you can add to that and subtract as you see fit. So you could expand that list um, as you please. You could put in other values. Um, if example, you could turn this around and you could say this could this could be no numbers in this and just only letters. Um, so not alphabetic, but just say alpha alphabetic. So you could turn this around and then you could basically say, you could still use this as well. So if you had just names in here, um, whatever you feel fit with names and you basically say, I don't want any of these values in the names, you could do the same thing again. Okay, so here's our output. So just to show you as an example, as we explained earlier on, have errors here it's just showing the error and then it's fixing this okay this um basically got a dollar sign here it's removed the dollar euro obviously multiplication is moving so now all we have we have a numeric field which we kind of said at, from the outset was this we only wanted numbers in it we have now taken in a set of information we found what errors are in it and we've outputted basically what we actually wanted it to be so that's um an example of how a, a very straightforward example of how data cleansing taking in values checking for in values against the list that you've defined basically cleansing that that list you've taken in of those invalid characters you want here in the error field and outputting so if this was being sent on for onward processing or um being given to somebody else say exported to an excel spreadsheet for further analysis it would be cleansed and would have no errors Obviously, as well, what you could do is you could use this in a scenario. If you're doing daily batch feeds, you could have this run before you do the batch feeds just to check that the, the files you're about to send, to send somewhere else actually has none of these values. If these are the values, if these are the values you don't want in it. And then you could have a data cleansing point there to fix it and do a, a replacement file. And then you know it's going in error free. So that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got some benefit out of it. Again, a lot of these videos, they're being posted up on the YouTube. Well, all these videos have been posted on the YouTube. So I appreciate if you're using YouTube a lot or you you're actually um, can go to the website. Have a look here. Click the subscribe button. It'll be really helpful and really useful. Really appreciate it. And we will come back soon and we will give you more videos that I hope you get some benefit out. I uh, appreciate any feedback as well. Um, you can basically come to us through the website. There's a number of ways you can contact it this way, or you could leave a comment it can be left on any of these videos as well. So if you're in a position to do that, I'd be very welcome. Okay. So I'll just let that load and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.